What's up guys, it's Matt Collins-Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate, we're talking about the CDS current environment connector, and we're going to look at the relate a record action for that connector. So relate a record allows you to connect two records together. So you connect them both together using a relationship that is currently available between those two. So what this means is you can um, you can connect one record to another record and that can be part of your relational database. CDS or Dynamics 365 has a relational database and it's part of the power that is in the platform and one of the most key advantages to it. So you can do things like reporting, history, um, all sorts of that good stuff that you get with relational databases. Now you can do this through the lookups um, and, and specify a specific lookup, but this allows you to just uh, update that relationship uh, inside a single step. If that's all you need to do, we can use that. So let's take a look at it today. So I'm in Power Automate here. I have a CDS current environment flow, which means this flow is inside a solution. And then I've got a CDS current environment trigger, which is when we update an account and we update the telephone number, we're going to trigger the flow. Next, we have a get records action. I'm going to use this get records action to show you something and give you a bit of advice uh, about some of these actions. Um, this um, record itself is a record for a company called Acme Incorporated or Ac Acme Inc. Um, and this is just the hard coded GUID for that record. I could use a, that piece of dynamic content. I'm just choosing to hard code it in in the interest of this video. Next, if I click on new step and then type in here, common data service, service, uh, I just wait for the connectors to catch up and we can see we've got two here. This one on the right is the common data service current environment connector. If I choose that, it'll show me a list of actions. When this list of actions pops up, as it has done here, we have this option down at the bottom that says relate records. So if I click on that, it then brings these things through. So it's asking me for four things. It's asking me for an entity name, it's asking me for an item ID, it's asking me for a relationship, and it's asking me for a URL. So the entity name, I'm going to choose accounts in this instance, and what we're going to do is we're going to map two accounts together. We're going to make one account a child account and one account a parent's account. So let's choose accounts. The item ID, we're actually going to choose the record that we're going to trigger this flow from. So if I type account into here and we scroll down uh, to the trigger, when a record is created, updated or deleted, we can put that piece of dynamic content in there and then I'll use that as the record lookup. Next, we're going to look at the relationships. So this is a list of all the relationships. So the first bit is the um, the uh, the other entity that we're looking at and then we've got the full name of the relationship here so we can scroll down and we can see things like case so we can relate uh, an account to a case and that relationship is called instant underscore customer underscore underscore accounts there's also another one that is msa underscore account underscore instant so you do need to be aware that there may be more than one relationship to another entity so you need to make sure you know what that relationship name is so you're setting the right thing in this instance, I'm going to choose uh, account underscore parent underscore account because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set a parent account. So what I'm doing in this is whatever is in my relate records here, so this account ID, this is going to be the parent account for another record. Next we have URL. So the URL is actually asking for the full URI of the um, of the API call. So we are looking for the full Dynamics domain, um, then forward slash API, forward slash, uh, I think it's like data or data, then forward slash API, then version number, then the entity, and then the uh, do it for it. Now, you can just type that in, that's easy enough to type in, but one of the things I'm actually going to show you is uh, I'm going to show you it using, um, a f like by using it by failing a flow. So I'm going to type in OData in here because the OData ID is actually the majority of what we need here. So we need most of that URL, but there is one issue with it at the moment, which is what I'm going to show you. So if I click on this get record one, because this is the record that we are related to, I'll put that in there. We're going to trigger this flow. We're just going to run from a, a previously um, a previously run flow because all I'm trying to do here is just show your flow failing. 
Now I'm showing you this so that we can get some information out. I use this technique all the time when I'm doing things like um, trying to create a parse JSON step. Uh, I don't always know how to write the full JSON schema, so one of the things I tend to do a lot is trigger a flow, get a JSON payload back um, with the correct sort of format that is needed, then use my parse JSON step, copy that body out that I got back in that first quest that failed, um, paste that into the generate from sample, um, click generate schema and then it'll automatically generate the schema for me. That is one one um, way I try to save um, save some time from and save some time and mistakes from doing um, from writing the JSON myself. And you can use that to then trigger to, to, to then like you know tagger, carry on and, and create your JSON step. Same thing in this instance. So what we actually need is this URL here. So this HTTPS. Then this is the Dynamics instance I have forward slash API, forward slash data, forward slash 9.1, then accounts, and then the druid. Now the reason this fails is because it's actually returning back the 9.1 API call, and what we need is the 9.0 API call. So we can see the error message here says the URI, uh, and then that um, URI is not valid, it's not based on this, and this is actually saying we need the 9.0. But because I've done that, I can just copy and paste this out, and I can click edit, and I can replace that with this. Now, I could just type this in. Um, it's not a very hard URL to remember. I could just type that in, and then I could also, you know, remove this step here, and I could put in my dynamic content, um, and it'll do exactly the same as, as copying out and failing it. I just wanted to show you it, because I think it's a handy tip to have, um, not just for late records, but for said, like parse JSON or anything that you're doing where you need to generate these sorts of things. So now that I've done that, I can, uh, oh, I need to update this to 9.0 from 9.1, and then we're ready to go. So I'll click on test, I'll perform the trigger action, click save and test. And I'll flick over to my Dynamics environment. So what we're going to do is we're going to give the Acme Incorporated a parent account. So we'll go to Accounts. We'll go down to Wayne Enterprises down here. And we'll update the telephone number because that will trigger the flow to run. And we'll hit Save and Close. We'll go back to our flow. And if it has caught up, it is running a little bit slowly at the moment. Uh, it might be running. Um, if not, I'll just go and update that record again just to make sure it has done. It is running a little bit on the slow side today, so we'll just update this just once more. Just to make sure. Oh no, it was already running anyway. So, even though this page hasn't updated, I know this flow has run. Uh, I said this is taking a little bit of time at the moment. But now we get the green bar to say the flow ran successfully. The reason I knew this run is because we had these little icons here. Uh, these mean that this is part of an organization and has a parent-child relationship. So if I go to Acme Inc, we can see it now has a parent account of Wayne Enterprises. Um, and we can see that these two now have these symbols to say they are part of an organization. Uh, and there we are. So that's still uh, still rendering, but um, I hope this was useful. This allows you to quickly and easily relate two records together, which is uh, very handy if you need to do uh, bulk jobs and you don't want to necessarily have to open up the record and update a record and then find the relationship and then type in everything that you need to type in. You can just use the um, entity name, the ID, the um, the URL, uh, the full API call uh, and or endpoint, and then also the relationship. It's four steps. It's easy. It's it's very to very much to the point. So it allows you to do that. So I hope this video was useful. If it was useful, um, let me know in the comments down below about what you're using this for. It's always uh, it's always happy to, to know what you're using these, these things for. Um, if you did find this video helpful, if you could like it and share it with your friends, it would be appreciated. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and you can click the bell if you want to be notified of new videos. And I'll see you next time.